Few of us would consider ourselves pinup worthy, but today on Make It, we're talking with fantasy photographer Sophie Spinell, who's been shameless in her pursuit of helping women discover and celebrate their secret fantasies. Hey Sophie, how you doing? Doing great, how about you? I'm awesome, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for being here. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. Let's hear about what Sophie's all about. Sure. I'm, I'm Sophie Spinell, and I, I do a lot of different types of work. Um, most of it is vintage-inspired photography or fantasy-inspired photography. So I do vintage glamour, pinup, some retro boudoir, and then a lot of stuff that's really just inspired by the secret dreams of my clients. The secret dreams of your clients, that's awesome. That's right. <laughs> so what is it that you're trying to do with those secret dreams? Why, why secret? Why are they dreams? I think it's actually because as adults, we just stop playing dress up and uh, we stop having that experience of play and creativity. Um, well, at least some of us stop, but as photographers, maybe I we have just do not it forever. Stopped yet. I have not stopped yet. I'm not yeah. about to stop, but okay. So some people that you're there to help yep. like bring that play back into their life. Exactly right. They come into the studio and they get a chance to try on a different version of themselves and, um, and experience something completely new, maybe gain confidence or self-knowledge. Um, that's what I'm focused on. And how did you get into uh, helping people play dress up and try out different versions of themselves? What is that like your, have you always been a dress up photographer, however you call it? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's fascinating actually. I was recently talking with my mother about my early childhood. Okay. And um, she said that I was always in my room drawing pictures of glamorous women um, so I think there was something of my work at a very early stage. When I went to college, I was mostly interested in philosophy and uh, linguistic anthropology. So that... <laughs> See the connection? <laughs> no connection whatsoever. <laughs> um, and when I graduated, I just wanted to do something that would have some sort of positive impact on the world. I mean, I was, you know, a heady 19, 20, 21 year old thinking like, let's change the world. Mm -hmm. So I ended up working at a policy institute I loved that job, I loved my boss, I loved the entire team I worked with, um, but I, I sort of woke up after five years and I thought, I really need to be doing something creative and I wanna see the faces of the people whose lives I might have an opportunity to change. Um, and I didn't really know exactly how to do that, but Shameless, and that's the name of my business, Shameless was sort of a theory um, that I tested out with a few friends, mm -hmm. um, and I hadn't done photography before, I wasn't professionally trained, um, but from that very first shoot, something extraordinary happened where all of these different aspects of my personality came together <laughs> and finally made sense wow. that I love talking to people, I love asking them questions about their lives, I love going really deep I'm incapable of small talk. Mm -hmm. um, so helping people explore what they're really interested in and, and what's lacking in their lives is already something that I do. Right. Um, but now I could do it with a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, I was already really fascinated with um, extravagant costumes and extravagant girliness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here was an opportunity to help people play with that if they wanted to. Um, and I also am kind of a drill sergeant when it comes to directing. So um, even in the first shoot, it was just um, an instinct that I didn't realize I had mm. to uh, help people get into the very best pose, um, control the lighting, all of that stuff came really naturally. So I'm guessing like you said you didn't have a background in photography, first time picking it up, and yet you knew what to do. Like how did you know like what how to pose people, or was that just a, a process that you went through? How did you get to that point of, of actually knowing exactly how to be a drill sergeant for? Yeah, well, I mean, my first Im images were not nearly <laughs> as polished as the later ones, right. so I felt it. Yes. I felt the instincts, but like, of course I had wrong. to hone them. Yes. You know, and and uh, I'm from a family of working artists, mm -hmm. um, so I had seen art in motion a lot, and I, I had been drawing and painting since mm -hmm. a really, really early age. Um, so composition wasn't alien to me at all. Um, and in terms of how to pose a specific person, um, I think 
that just had to do with an interest, a fascination with how a body fills a frame. Mm -hmm. um, and also a real dedication to helping people um, see themselves in a way that made them feel good right. and made them adore themselves right. instead of having to look at an image and have that moment that we've all had sometimes where you just are ashamed. Right. <laughs> and therefore shameless. So, exactly. So what's the like the idea for shameless? Did that come about at the same time that you decided to become a photographer? Exactly or? the same moment. In fact, um, there were three months between my first test shoot and when it was my full-time job. Wow. How did that happen? How was that process? Did you become profitable immediately or how did you like make that transition? I know there's a lot of folks yeah. that are watching and are figuring out like, I want to transition into this being my full-time job. Yep. Maybe tell us a little bit about what your process was and how you went through that. Absolutely. When I thought of Shameless, it was something I wanted to do. If I was a client, mm -hmm. this is the photo shoot that I would book. Mm -hmm. This is the studio that would be my dream. and. I think that's why it took off so quickly. It was because I tapped into something that was so true, yeah, a true longing me. for yeah. me, and it was for a lot of other people too. So if, if you as an artist feel there's something lacking and yeah. there's some kind of studio that doesn't exist that is really authentic to you and authentic to what's really important to you, that's what you should do. Right. It should be true to you. It should be completely unique. And what was some of the feedback or the responses that you got from some of your, some of your first clients? Oh my God, <laughs> it was wonderful, yeah. you know? And it, and it confirmed for me, like this is clearly my calling. Mm -hmm. There's never been anything I've done before now that has engaged this many different aspects of me and has made other people so happy. Right. And um, you know, I, I had some early clients who said things like, I literally have never felt beautiful in my life before this. You know, for them it was transformative mm -hmm. and that meant everything to me. Right. That's exactly what I've been hoping for. Right. Um, Sounds like you're almost a little bit of a therapist. You know, you're, you're sitting helping people yeah. out and understand like, well, how can we make you feel like shameless about these photos? What, what do you do to do that? I mean, you said that you start asking a bunch of questions, Well, what's your process? How do you go through that and figure out, well, how do I present you in a way that you will feel that, that whatever that is that you want to be? Absolutely. Well, everyone's really different. Mm. So we have a lot of different pathways to connection at Shameless um, that uh, we've refined over time. And I say we because it's no longer just me. I work with Carrie Lynn, who's completely amazing, and I work with Angela Altis. Um, and we're in New York and San Francisco. So through these two studios and us three as collaborators, we help re-envision a lot of different aspects of the business. And we talk all the time about w how connected we were with our clients this week mm -hmm. and what we can do def differently next week. The pathways include things like um, an in-depth questionnaire for introverts who want to write novels to us, mm -hmm. um, sitting down eye to eye with people in studio who want to share in person. Mm -hmm. um, for people who don't want to have to articulate it verbally, we have a lot of different um, ways to actually engage them in the process of trying things on, much like playing dress up as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, so there are all these different ways that, um, that we can tap into what people are really curious about, what excites them. Um, and nothing tells us more than that moment when they look in the mirror in whatever it is or with a, whatever prop. Um, you, can't mistake, you can't mistake that type of delight mm -hmm. and, um, and hope that's on somebody's face yeah. when you really tap into it. That's awesome. Feels you also great. mentioned something that I really liked um, on previously when we were chatting, and you even kind of alluded to it right now, which was you know, like showing you a vision of, of a person you'd fall in love with, or even the way somebody who's already in love with you sees you. Yes. And I wonder if you could uh, talk about that a little bit, because that was really uh, an interesting perspective that you had. Absolutely. When a person who's in love with you looks at you, all of the flaws are edited out, or what you think are your flaws. They're not gonna look at your stray hairs. They're not gonna look at that blemish. A really good photographer and a really good retoucher yeah. is somebody who can help you see yourself mm -hmm. the way someone who is in love with you would perceive you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I would love to take a look at some of your photos Let's and do it. play around with some stuff. Let's Great. go check it out. All right. So let's check out some images. Uh, you've got this one really beautiful, colorful, fun image. Tell me a little bit about this one. Well, this is a, a great example of the need for collaboration with 
assistants pulling up the skirt on both sides. Um, this client was celebrating her birthday and wanted to have something wonderful that she could post that would be really a great celebration of that. Before she, we, uh, we draw out all of the different poses that we're planning to do and incorporate the different props and whatnot. So who's drawing this? This is really well drawn. Oh. Is, this, is this you? This is me. Wow, you're you're an amazing drawer <laughs> as well as a photographer. It's, I find it's really helpful to have a drawing so that you don't forget along the way what mm. you were thinking of. Mm. Um, I mean, for everyone, I think the creative space is a little different. So um, maybe maybe some people respond best in the moment and they're more spontaneous. I'm a very methodical, planned out mm -hmm. kind of gal. And I, I will do my best work if I have a quiet moment mm. by myself to actually do all the planning. You know, I think a huge part of what goes into a photo shoot is your team. Mm -hmm. And this is Carrie Lynn, who I work with, and this is Elena, who does hair on a lot of our shoots. Mm -hmm. And um, I think part of what makes photography joyful is having a team that you absolutely are in love with right. and you guys work so well together creatively. This is important to me because I feel like these shoots I couldn't possibly pull out pull off without mm -hmm. all of the contributions of the people that I work with. Mm -hmm. This is an example of, of uh, you know, somebody who, you know, she wanted to illustrate her love of books mm -hmm. and, but to, to also have a different side of her. So she's, you know, maybe people think she's a bookworm and that means she's super serious or that she's not um, attractive, you know, in that bookishness. Mm -hmm. But this is a way to combine those two things and also to call on such a famous shot of Marilyn Monroe, mm -hmm. you know, where her skirt is blowing up, but, but to do it with somebody different than Marilyn Monroe. Right. Somebody who is instead emphasizing her brain at the right. same time as she's doing that. So right. I think that's, um, you know, something that's really fun and kind of uses the archetypes, but um, mm -hmm. uh, revisits them in a new way. This is the same model, but mm. she looks really different yeah, in this. Yeah, very different. Yeah, this is vintage glamour, yeah. so it's very demanding in terms of the lighting. This has six lights on it, and yet it's also very DIY at the same time. Like, this is just an old bridesmaid's dress, and then we put, um, so this is the bridesmaid's dress, and then we put this strip of satin. This is completely separate from the dress, mm -hmm. but it That's helps beautiful. it actually be um, splendid in the sort of, fantasy over the top way mm. that uh, vintage glamour tends to be. This particular model is just one of the kindest people I've ever met in my life. She's a nurse mm -hmm. by day um, and nurses have to, you know, work really hard, get really dirty all the time. Right. They're always focused on other people. So I think it's a really good um, example of just, you know, people who need to step outside of their lives and finally have the focus be on them. Right. And this, this woman is a nanny. Um, so she also is very focused on um, other people most of the time. Yeah, beautiful. This particular client, I just, oh, I adore her. She was visibly trembling. Oh, wow. She was so scared. She yeah. said she'd never really gotten girly before. Mm. And um, So how do you help people that are like that, that shaking up? How do you yeah. get them to calm their nerves? Well, I think just by being real, mm. you know, like being who we actually are. Right. I actually really care about my clients, like <laughs> for real. You so know, what you're like, saying is like <laughs> care. be a person, I see. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I remember in that particular shoot, I, I was just invested in the process, mm -hmm. sitting down with her and, you know, and talking with her about what she wanted to, um, to achieve with the shoot and then having her try on the dresses and, and going through the makeover. I was so invested that before she turned to look in the mirror, I had this swell of emotion of hope and, mm -hmm. you know, like, is she going to love what yeah. she sees? So you feel like, oh, I better not mess up. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's the first time yeah. a person has been willing to go to that, like, really glamorous place, right. it's scary for them. Yeah. And it's a huge leap of faith. Right. And we want to be able to catch that, right, right. that fall every time. Yeah. And with her, it was just... Such well, an amazing experience. Looks like you did a great job. I think, you know, this is one of those examples, too, of, of retouching being such a process of, like, bringing out what I see. Because some, sometimes with this kind of really hard lighting, it brings out a lot of texture and mm -hmm. skin. And right, uh, right. all of that can be, it can be changed in post so that, 
the lighting is just as dramatic as you want it to be. But you don't have and the yet, cross lighting of the pores. And, yeah, 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 nobody needs that. Um, so I think age is a huge issue for a lot of women. Right. You know, do at what point am I no longer allowed to do a photo shoot? When mm -hmm. you know, when can I pull this off? This person is almost seventy, mm -hmm. and she looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. She was really excited about the fact that she had recently started doing yoga mm. and strength, like having strength in her body for the first time in her life, really. Mm -hmm. So I think that that was, um, you know, something that I, I, I mean, honestly, I, I would love to know what a lot of narratives are like for people who are getting older. Mm -hmm. We don't see a lot of that and certainly not in the context of beauty. This is a wonderful, wonderful woman who, you know, coming into the studio, she was just so excited about everything. Mm -hmm. She, and she, picked this garment and honestly I think eventually I'm gonna have to send it to her because it looks so amazing on her. Um, and after the shoot she was so excited about uh, this image that she actually ended up getting it tattooed on herself. Wow. And that really meant a lot to us. Mm -hmm. This is taken in collaboration with Carrie Lynn to mm -hmm. In fact, several of these images were. Wow. Both of us just sat there and were like, oh my goodness, this, you know, this means something. If your fantasy image becomes an image of yourself, right. that's the image you want to have tattooed on yourself, that's, that's really extraordinary. Well, that's really cool. I mean, these are really, really amazing photos. And I really, so really loved uh, having you walk us through it and, and seeing how you got to these points and seeing you uh, accomplishing your dream and, and living your dream is just really, really uh, rewarding to, to see and hear. Thank so. you. I wish it for everyone. I yeah. absolutely do. And thank you out there for coming in and watching. Uh, come join us again. See you next time.